Uh, so first, it seems like there are there were two separate items for proposals. One was kind of the Bridge Street first and second street area, and then one was Thomas Street. So it sounds like that one company, uh, Bleak, Blinker, Bleaker, Blinker, yeah, Blinker with Adex Holdings, yeah, put in proposals for they both did, yeah. areas. Can you explain what those proposals are and kind of where they are going to be? Sure. So you know, um, Blinker and its uh, subsidiary Edifex Holdings, you know, have done a variety of infill projects in the city. Um, you know, the duplexes along Thomas Street, the row houses along Third Street. Um, you know, and so, and we've been going through a variety of RFPs, you know, through, um, you know, along the North Rear Front area, along, obviously, Phase 2 of Thomas Street, which was discussed tonight, you know, those remnant parcels, and, you know, always um, looking for, you know, developers who are interested in doing infill, um, you know, infill projects that bring, you know, diversity of housing choice, you know, into the city. So we're always looking for new ideas and new, new thoughts about that. And so obviously tonight they presented, you know, a package um, of, you know, of uh, in housing projects um, totaling about $15 million across a variety of different parcels, you know, um, city owned parcels that were, you know, acquired for redevelopment, whether it's along, you know, First Street or it's a, you know, along Second uh, by Bridge or, um, you know, along Tom or along the Thomas Street Phase Two remnants. So the committee, you know, reviewed those, a variety of different housing styles, um, you know, different sized buildings, um, you know, different different takes on, you know, on, on options for housing choices. And we'll, you know, going to continue negotiating and working with the developer, you know, given the feedback tonight, you know, to talk about what's best, uh, you know, to fit with the strategy of the city and to fit specifically into those you know respective neighborhoods what you know what seems to fit the best um, and of course you know this is just the first step um, as dialogue takes place within the economic development committee you know zoning changes are required um, obviously we go through the planning commission and you know be reviewed by the council as a whole so you know there's always a very uh, extensive you know public process with any you know with any potential project but you know we're excited to uh, work with the developer and um, excited to see you know kind of continued major investment um, in housing in the city uh, so you mentioned that there was a lot of feedback tonight and it seemed like there were a lot of different concerns from both residents and uh, committee members what were kind of the main concerns that stood out to the city yeah, when talking sure. about these well you know anytime you're working with remnant parcels especially you know we're trying to find the best solution we're trying to find you know the best planned options you know that kind of accommodate the neighborhood and work with the parcels that we have you know we have a lot of constraints you know when you're working with an urban neighborhood where parcels are not necessarily, you know, um, you know, uh, blue sky. You know, you have to work within those constraints. And you have to be sensitive, you know, to neighbors' concerns, but also the broader effort of, you know, welcoming new residents and, you know, facilitating new infill across the city. You know, so I think the council is always working to balance that and find a good solution that you know accommodates the neighbors um you know concerns and ideas um while also you know being pragmatic for builders and developers to you know to uh, get that investment uh in the city so no action was taken tonight but it does sound like that listening sessions are going to be scheduled for thomas street so why yeah. is the city going to do listening sessions for this particular project yeah well i think you know there's great sensitivity to the you know, the ongoing project, you know, Thomas Street, the project itself, you know, the road reconstruction took a long time to complete. You know, one thing we're proud is to finally see it finished, a long delayed project finally finished. And, you know, I think there's sensitivity on the council to be, you know, extra, you know, extra concerned about how those parcels are reutilized. Um, those parcels were taken for the road project, you know, they're not 
for redevelopment. You know, we did not, you know, acquire any of the Thomas Street corridor, you know, for redevelopment. We required it, we acquired it for the road project. And then, you know, the strategy has been to try to find, right, the best solutions that, you know, that we can to accommodate that, the best planned options. And I believe we have done that along the corridor, you know, so far. We want to keep doing that, obviously, with this next phase. And I know one of the concerns I heard tonight, at least from a couple of committee members, is the fact that this housing that's been proposed by ADEX is mainly market rate and that there's concerns that there's not enough workforce housing. What is the city looking to do to kind of address those concerns with the fact that a lot of the projects around here lately have just been market rate housing? Sure. So, I mean, obviously affordable housing is by its nature not affordable to build, you know, and that's always the challenge. So it's the role of the city to help you know, find solutions to accommodate that, you know, and we have done that through a variety of different means. You know, one uh, example is just, you know, the renovation of Savo Supply um, was, you know, obviously affordable units. Um, the city acquired that property and sold it at a loss, you know, to facilitate its redevelopment using historic tax credits and low-income housing tax credits. We just earlier, um, or yeah, late last year approved a loan for the entire renovation of the landmark. You know, today the landmark is a market rate uh, property, um, and but it's in need of renovation. I think most people recognize that. We really value it as a historic building, and so this is a great opportunity to see it renovated and to see some of the units be held affordable, uh, specifically held affordable, even after they're extensively renovated. Um, you know, for you know to fill that need. Um, and just recently, we also approved um, affordable units. Um, at the old Ponderosa Motel, you know, another effort to you know, add more affordable units where possible. So I think, you know, the dialogue tonight was great uh, to discuss in certain areas where we can add more affordable housing. Um, of course, you know, developers know that they, you know, have to make their performa work and, you know, they're trying to accommodate the, you know, increased cost of construction with, you know, with, with rents that, you know, that, that, that meet that. And then what's kind of the next step since no action was taken tonight? Uh, yeah, I, we would imagine future, you know, our future listening session and then future dialogue, you know, on the project in different committees. You know, obviously it goes through a extensive process. So, you know, whether it's um, the Economic Development Committee and then Finance Committee, if there's any incentives associated with projects and, you know, and Planning Commission, if there are any zoning changes or any requirements from a land use perspective, and then of course, Council to, you know, approve those items. So, um, you know, um, yeah, I mean, we there's going to be kind of continued dialogue about, you know, the proposal as it kind of moves through these steps. Um, you know, but um, again, we're excited that, you know, to have the proposal and to have, to be able to work on the project, you know, which continues to value um, urban living and continues to, you know, to, to prove the great marketability of housing choice within Wausau. Okay.